we are one week into February now and it is such a beautiful day. It's already feeling so much warmer and I've been spying lots of new greenery around. So let's see what we can find today. I was just drawn to the forest floor by all of this gorgeous lich in here. But as I came down, I noticed some black witch's butter, Exidia glandulosa. These are called black witch's butter because they were thought to counteract witchcraft and people used to throw these into the fires around their homes to ward off witches. Black witch's butter has got this shiny top to it and then underneath is much more of a velvety kind of matte texture. What's cool about these is that you can often find them shriveled up on wood, but as soon as we get a rain, then they tend to plump back out and become this jelly-like texture again. These can look quite superficially similar to the jelly fungus because it has got that gelatinous kind of texture, but it doesn't have the downwards cup-facing shape as you'd expect from the jelly ear. You'll often find them on dead hardwoods, so fallen branches, logs, stumps and things like that. These are a saprophytic mushroom, which means they feed on dead and decaying organic matter. So these really help to break down the forest floor. So you can see on the underside, it's quite velvety as opposed to the shiny kind of glossy top. These aren't poisonous, but they're not exactly edible either. They are considered a survival food. So if you are stranded in the woods with nothing else to eat, then you can eat which is butter. They are considered to be medicinal though and have shown to have anti-tumor properties and also to help with respiratory conditions as well. Big old pine trees up here, which means lots of lovely pine needles on the forest floor. Pine needles are edible and they're one of the easier conifers to identify because of their needles. So pine needles don't like to be lonely and you'll always see them in pairs or in threes, they always grow in groups. So if you see needles that are in groups of two or three, you can be sure that it's a pine tree. So in my January video, I told you how to make the spruce tea and pine needle tea is much the same way. So you take off the needles and then you steep them in boiling water for about five minutes, strain them off and drink the liquid. And it's a really lovely, nutritious wild tea that you can have when you're out in the woods. So just a bit of context where we are today. We are in a beautiful, mixed ancient woodland about half an hour walk from my house. I live in Sheffield. And uh, yeah, it's a huge, huge space made out of three woodlands and it's just absolutely gorgeous. This beautiful mushroom here is probably one of the most well-known medicinal mushrooms. It's turkey tail or Trimetes versicolor and it's probably one of the most researched and studied of the, all of the medicinal mushrooms because it has amazing properties. It's really high in polysaccharides which means it helps to increase the amount of immune cells in our body and helps to support the immune system. It's also been shown to have anti-tumor effects and help relieve the symptoms of chemotherapy and radiation as well. They are anti-inflammatory and they're also full of prebiotics, so they help to support gut health by promoting the growth of beneficial bacteria in the stomach. Really amazing little mushroom. Pretty too. Turkey tail quite easily identified by these beautiful concentric colored bands on the upper surface. And these can range in colour from browns to beiges and even really quite vivid blues as well. You could get these confused with false turkey tail, but false turkey tail is actually a cross fungus. So an easy way to distinguish the two is just to flip them over. And on the true turkey tail, you'll see pores underneath. And they're very, very small, but they will be visible. False turkey tail just has an entirely smooth underneath because like I said, it's a cross fungus rather than a polypore. Loads of sweet chestnuts on the ground still. The squirrels have not obviously nabbed most of the good ones. There's still a few about, which is quite surprising in February still. This little guy here is called the birch polypore or Formitopsis betulina, and it's an edible and medicinal mushroom that can be used in a variety of different ways, from teas, tinctures, powders, and even in bushcraft as fire starter and plasters as well. So this little thing is awesome for making plasters with when you're out in the woods. You can score 
a little plaster shape from the underside and peel off the top layer and it's self-adhesive, it's antimicrobial, it's antibacterial, it helps to stem blood and it's just a really good little thing to know about if you're out camping in the woods and you get a little cut. As the name suggests, birch polypore grows on birch trees and it's been used for thousands of years in traditional medicine for its potent health benefits. They have anti-inflammatory properties and help to reduce inflammation in the body. They've also got antibacterial properties, so they're really useful for treating infections and that's why they're really great for making bushcraft plasters out of. And lots of studies also suggest that they've got anti-tumour properties as well. I haven't got my knife with me today, but next time I come across one with my knife in my bag, I'll show you how to make a little plaster out of one of these. Birch bark itself is also an awesome fire starter. The oils inside birch bark means that it'll ignite even when it's damp. And if it's tinder that you're after, you're wanting to take that from the young birch trees. The papery stuff on the outside catches a spark so easily and it's just great for starting fires. The inner bark of birch trees can be ground up and used as like a type of flower. The sap from birch trees was traditionally used as a sweetener and soon it'll be time to start tapping birch trees for the sap. Um, and if you do do this at the right time of year, you can get up to five litres a day from a single birch tree. It's always worth noting that when you are harvesting tree bark or anything from trees, make sure to do it mindfully and sustainably. I've just found some coal fungus. These are also called King Alfred's cakes, supposedly because King Alfred burnt a load of buns in the oven once and they came out looking like this. Um, these are also called cramp balls because they can be made into a herbal infusion and help to relieve cramps. And they're also called coal fungus because, well, they look like a piece of coal and they act like it too. They take an ember really well and you can actually use them to transport your fire from one location to another because uh, coal fungus this size will keep burning for a good few hours so you can just pop it in a tin and use this to transport to your new location to start a fire with. So it's a really useful little fungus to find when you're out and about camping or for bushcraft um, and I keep one of these in my little fire start pack so they're really useful little things. Just left the woodland and right on the edges as I come out is all of this three-cornered lake and I could smell it before I could see it. Sorry for the noise, it's right next to a main busy road now. But um, yeah, this is a wild allium and it can be used much the same way as wild garlic, it just has a much milder flavour. Um, it's really, really nice. A key identifying feature are the three points. So it's three-cornered because it's got these three points. So when you pick it, you want to be seeing like a V shape in the leaf. Sometimes when they're a bit more plump, they could be like a triangle shape. But this is a beautiful wild edible that you can use any, in any dish that you'd use onion and garlic for. So I'm actually um, going to go see inside the woodland and see if I can find any other patches. I'd quite like to harvest some of that to take home. What's great for foragers about Three Cornered Leek is that it is an invasive plant. So you can harvest as much Three Cornered Leek as you want because, yeah, like I say, it's an invasive species. And if you grow this in your garden or allotment, it's actually illegal to let this escape because it is so invasive to the UK. So yeah, you can pick away and harvest as much as you like from this. So the flowers of three-cornered leeks grow in clusters and they are beautiful white, drooping, hanging kind of bell-shaped flowers. And they've got a distinctive green stripe that goes up the middle of each petal and that's how you can distinguish three-cornered leeks from other sort of flowering spring bulbs. So this is grass that's growing right next to it so it can look similar. But I mean, just pick it, crush it and smell it. And that's the best way to identify it because it just does smell like really mild kind of onion and anything that smells of onion and garlic in the UK is edible. So yeah, just crush the leaves, give it a whiff and just see what it smells like.